Hello, uh, this video we're going to go through the Market Timing Service uh, blog so you can kind of get a better idea of what it looks like once you sign up for your trial. Um, so first of all, just to clarify, the, the MTS is a blog. You have a home page, you have your profile for your account, and um, so I'm going to go back over here. So once you start your trial, uh, you'll be able to scroll back through and you'll see the different, the different dates, September 4th. You know, and as you scroll back, they get a little bit smaller. Um, and I wanted to take you through an example, uh, two example posts that's sort of a, an opening position for a trade and a closing position for a trade. So I'm going to go back a little bit farther, and we're going to look at um, this new short trade and bonus trade. And you'll see each title of each post, um, you know, it'll say MTS update and it's just a real brief description of what it is. In this case, it's a new short trades and a bonus trade. So let's click on this post. And again, this is on, on this was on August 16th, 2011. <clears throat> so the first part of this particular post, um, you know, we're explaining to you the, the trades we're gonna take and why. Um, and one of the things I mentioned earlier um, in an earlier post was that some of the, some of our methodology we track market leaders as they compare to the SPY, FCX, which is a large copper producer, which is kind of seen as a proxy for global or industrial demand, um, can often lead the market and it often does. So in this particular post, we talked about FCX and SPY, and and the trades we were going to take. So we also give a an SPY chart here for this particular post, and one of the reasons we got in. Um, we got we had this big downfall in um, you know in August, and we kind of rallied back up, got a little bit past the 38.2, closed above the 10. We closed uh, the next day. We ended up closing lower, and when you compare that to FCX, who was supposed to be a market leader, you can see that they were underperforming the SPY. They didn't even make it to the 10, the 10 day or the 38.2. So we you know we we both kind of had these Doji candles here. So uh, we decided to initiate the short trade, and this is what the trade table looks like for this particular post. And you can see on the August 16th, we were telling you on the 17th, 17th we want you to buy a half position um, of the SPY September 125 puts. And this would have been a market order for the following morning, and this is what we ended up getting filled at. And for most trades, especially our option trades, we typically go with a a deeper in the money put or call depending on the trade uh, usually we shoot for a delta of around 70 cents and we um, we will usually initiate an initial OCO stop limit order so that you know we're kind of protected in case this thing goes against us right away so if you don't know what I just said you don't know what the delta means or you don't know what an OCO order it means like don't worry about that we're gonna explain to you exactly what that means the OCO order is a one cancels other order. It's kind of a combination of a stop and a limit order. Um, and so we usually put this on right away. And what happens here is if, if this trade went against us and we were to lose 30% of this trade, we would be stopped out and the trade would close and it would also cancel the limit order. Uh, now, if this trade uh, went in our favor and we hit the limit order, we would close the trade with a 60% profit and it would cancel the stop order. And this is a, a very good technique for, especially those people who um, can't, you know, they don't really day trade. They like to trade, but they maybe have a day job. They can't watch the market all day. You know, we put these type of orders on and we're gonna show you in videos in the MTS on how to do this in the Thinkorswim platform. Um, so this particular trade, we did a 3060 OCO order. And again, this is a typical option uh, trade for us. On the ETF side, for those that don't trade options that only do the ETF portion, um, since we were getting short on the SPY, we decided uh, to buy the SDS, which is a two times inverse of the SPY. So if the SPY were to drop 2%, the SDS would gain about 4%. Uh, so this is a way for people who don't want to sell short, they'd rather just buy inverted uh, um, ETFs. And this was the fill price we got in. And then for this particular post, we had already switched to conservative on our retirement and there was no change. And our bonus options trade, 
uh, from the next morning with FCX. We bought the September 50 puts. This was the price. And again, we did a 3060 OCO order. And <clears throat> you can see that we recommended half positions here. And you look at this chart, you know, we didn't want to jump in short in case this went back up and you know, uh, or jump in long. And, you know, we, we, were, we, we pair our position size for what we think the risk is. So this post came out on August 16th and that's kind of an opening trade post I wanted to show you an example of. So now I want to show, go back and show you uh, the follow-up post for this which was a couple days later and what the trade table looks like and, and whatnot. So I'm going to go back up here and scroll back down real quick and I think this follow-up post was two days later on the um, 18th so you'll see the the title limit orders hit so let's click on that in this particular post I put a video explaining what happened how we got out of the trades uh, all of our videos and um, and charts are iPhone and Android compatible you know so if you have an iPad or you know a droid phone you'll be able to view these videos from your mobile device um, so here's the follow-up trade table on this you can see that we still have our buy date of 817, half position. These were the ones, you know, nothing really changed in this first part, but this order was closed on this day. We hit the limit order, which at that point was 1086. This is what we got uh, filled for. So, you know, less than two days, we really nailed this one. We had a 61% gain on our SBY um, puts, and the same, we had about 60% gain on our FCX puts. So, for those that were you know, working their job and they place these orders with these, the OCO bracket orders, you know, they made 60% in two days and all they had to do was um, place these orders and then go to work and not worry about it until the next night. So that's what we try to do. Um, we try to update this, you know, sometimes we'll, instead of, um, you know, if this hadn't gotten a hit, maybe it was a slower process we would have updated the status maybe we changed the OCO bracket we changed the percentages or we changed the stop order raise our stops per se so those are some of the things that can happen also in some of these trades so hopefully this video gave you a a little more insight as to what the NTS looks like what to expect um, you know what the trade table looks like and how we present these trades to you and we try to do it in a simple fashion um, so that it's easy to follow if you have any questions, please contact us about this. Um, and again, if you want to be a part of the charter member deal that's coming this fall, you'll need to sign up on our uh, main site in the email um, section so that you can receive email updates to the blog and you'll also get the charter member deal when it comes out. All right. Thanks a lot.